I was, I've been reading through Matthew, the book of Matthew, and there's a few thoughts that really came out to me as I was reading it, and I thought it'd be a good thing for me to share with everybody here at the break, breaking of bread. And I was thinking about kind of Jesus' last days as I was reading the As I was reading um, the latter chapters of Matthew, and I'm in Matthew chapter 26 here, and then it says, it says this here in, about Judas. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, "What are you willing to give me?" if I hand him over to you. And that, that phrase there just really stuck out to me. What are you willing to give me? You, you have some insight into where Judas was at at that time as he was, where his heart was at, that he was going to betray him and his thoughts are were on what he could get for himself. What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 silver coins, you know. And in my mind, I can see that. You just think of the symbolism here. They're counting them out slowly. Every coin, hey, this is what the world has to offer you. It has to offer you pleasure. It has to offer you friend. It offers you financial freedom. You know, think about as they're pay he's, he's, think, just picture them slowly slowly luring him with these coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. And then we see at the Last Supper, you think of this as Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. He knew he was going to suffer. He knew he was going to be crucified. He knew how incredibly unbearable it was going to be and what he was going to suffer and yet he had foreknowledge of that going into that you think of the the courage of Jesus and yet here he is eating with his disciples continuing to instruct them and warn them and challenge them and he said this the son of man will go just as as it is written about him but woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. He directly told him, You are, the, you are my betrayer. He warned him, You are the one that would betray me. Then we see in Gethsemane the betrayal here. Again, I'm in Matthew 26, verse 47. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the, is the man. Arrest him. Going at once, Jesus said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. So here we see Judas betraying him, Jesus with a kiss. You know, any way you look at this, this is bad. <laughs> you know, any way you look at it, this, this shows the heart of a sinful man, you know. And we can, we can look at this and say, wow, Judas is, Judas is bad. And Judas was. This was horrible. I'm going to go back to the Last Supper here and, and say something that Jesus said to all of the other disciples for us to, to really consider as we break bread here. Again, I'm in Matthew 26 here, verse 31. 
And he's talking to all the disciples. Then Jesus told them, this very night, you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Next verse here, we see Peter's response here. And I think this is a typical human response. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I will be loyal to you. I will be faithful to you. That last part was, I will be loyal to you, I'll be faithful to you. It was not the verse, it was my um, summary of what he was saying. Um, verse 34, this is the words of Jesus. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same, all of them. So they're all in the same boat. You know, I'm going to be faithful to you. So here we have we see later in the Garden of Gethsemane that when Jesus was right before he was about to get taken in, he asked his closest friends to come with him and pray with him, right? His closest friends, his, his friends that were going to die with him. But they couldn't even pray with him for an hour. They just couldn't. They kept falling asleep, right? So who is faithful God is faithful. <laughs> Who follows through completely? God is the one that follows through completely. So what is the point of all this? Hey, you're all going to fall away. Jesus is telling us, and we see this in the breaking of bread, we fall short. Every one of us falls short. And we need to really take ownership of our shortness and really look to Jesus. So the breaking of bread is not about oh, look, I, I did communion today. I did something good. And it is a good thing that we've done, that we're doing here, because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. But the breaking of bread is about Jesus doing something for us that we could not, never do for ourselves, ever. And that's die for depraved, sinful people. see in Matthew 26 55 at Gethsemane it says then all that the back end of the verse says then all the disciples deserted him and fled and what I want us to consider here this morning is that we would take ownership of our sinfulness and that is true of every one of us. No, I will live for you, Jesus. No, you will not. I will be faithful to you, Lord. You will not be faithful enough to gain your salvation. We are wretched sinners, needy sinners. And it was our very sin, our very offense, our very self-righteousness it was like when Peter said hey you know what these guys might not do it but I'm going to do it that's us we're self-righteous we think we're a little bit better than the next guy we can follow a little bit better but we can't we are utterly depraved so where does that leave us that leaves us utterly needy it leaves us desperate. It leaves us sorrowful. We see in Isaiah 53. I'm in verse 5 here. No, no. Think of this as we take ownership for our sins. And don't point at Judas 
We can point at Judas and say that was sinful because it was sinful. But we need to point at ourselves and say we also have abandoned him. We also have scattered. We also have been unfaithful. And we are wholly and fully accountable. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. Think about that. Jesus on the cross, when he was, when he was pierced, put your name on it. You did that. You're responsible for that. It was your sin. He was crushed for our iniquities. He was punishment. The punishment that brought us peace was upon, in, was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, God is completely, he is holy. He is absolutely holy. He is absolutely righteous. He absolutely despises sin. He hates it. He can't even, he can't even look at it. So if there's anybody in this room that is putting your trust in salvation that you are just trying to do good. I'm just trying to be a good person. I'm a little better than that guy down the street. I'm, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not perfect, but, I'm, but I'm, just, I'm just trying. I'm putting effort out. All of your righteous deeds are like filthy, disgusting rags in the eyes of Jesus because he demands absolute perfection. And his perfection is not found in anybody sitting in this seat. It's found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So we're guilty in need of a savior. And what we do at that point, we say, Lord, I can't do a thing. I know that you died for me on the cross. I know it was my sin that put you there. It was my transgression that put you there. I'm so very guilty, God, and I'm so very sorry. I put my faith in you and what you did at the cross to save me. Save me today, Lord Jesus. If you've never asked him to do that, do it today. Don't wait. And if you, as a Christian, you're trusting in a selfish way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity on the cross every one of our sinful actions, any, any one of our sinful inactions, things we should be doing but haven't been doing, were laid on Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus, let's take up of the cup together and of the bread together and remember what he did. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for your tremendous love, God your holiness, God. We are unholy, unrighteous, sinful people, God, and we don't understand your justice and your righteousness, and we try to earn and work and strive and compare ourselves with each other, and when we do so, we are not wise. Lord, but you know, you're perfect, God, and you know there is one way to redeem mankind. It is a mysterious and amazing, strange plan of salvation that you would send your one and only son into the world to die for us, Lord Jesus. But you did. Lord, he died on the cross and took nails for us, God. And right now here, Lord, we want to take of the bread. We want to think of your body that took nails and took a crown of thorns and took abuse. Uh, we want to remember him. Let's take of the bread together. And Lord Jesus, what can wash away our sins? Nothing. Nothing, you say. Nothing but the blood of Jesus not our righteous acts, not our good intentions. Lord Jesus, you said, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. And it was real blood that you spilled for us, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we're so thankful that you died for us, God. We put our trust in you. We are so... We stand in amazement that on the third day, Lord, you rose from the dead to live forevermore, God. And as we place our trust in you for salvation, we will live forever with you. Let's take the cup together as we drink of its sweetness. We remember Jesus that died for us on the cross and was raised again so that we might live. Let's take the cup together. God bless our day bless our time in your word thank you so much God may Christ be to us more and more God your cross your resurrection your very life your very heartbeat God that we would practice the presence of God daily and be close to you God be a light to this world. In Jesus' name.